Welcome to the alarm handling video. We appreciate you taking the time to learn a little bit more about our robust application. In this video, we will guide you through the features of the alarm handling screen and demonstrate how an operator would handle an alarm in Manitou. There are three ways to enter into the alarm handling form. There's a shortcut bar that contains a house with a star icon. The operations menu also has an option to enter alarm handling. And finally, when customized, there can be a shortcut link within the navigator. Upon entering the alarm handling form, the default setting is to enter as a manual alarm handler. Therefore, when the form loads, if there is an available alarm to handle, all available manual alarm handlers receive a present dialog that produces an audible ding through the speakers every three seconds. To accept this alarm, simply click yes or press enter on your keyboard. This can also be configured to have alarms automatically be presented to the operator, or you can simply allow your operators to manually pick the alarm out of the alarm queue. In the alarm handling screen, you will notice here in the top left corner is where the customer's information is. This section lists the customer account ID and name highlighted in bold. Following the customer information is the site address information, including any cross street or subdivision information if listed within the customer record. We have a language utility that allows you to translate into any language. For US customers, this can be helpful for changing terminology or verbiage seen on the screen, for example, county versus subdivision. The next section down displays the dealer information when applicable. If a customer or a monitoring company does not use installing companies or segregates their accounts using the dealer features, this section remains blank. The dealer section includes the dealer ID and name in bold, followed by any dealer contact phone number. The alarm information section details the specifics of this current alarm. It is very easy to know what sort of alarm you have because the colored bar within the alarm section displays the type of alarm and allows for a very quick visual cue for your operators. These colors can be configured within the supervisor workstation. Underneath the alarm description are all the details of the alarm, including the date and time the alarm arrived, which system, area and zone this alarm affects, as well as any configured zone description or point ID. The customer log section of the alarm handling form shows all alarm and signal activity for this account for the past seven days. The newest activity will always be at the top of the activity log. Red indicates the current alarm. This is the alarm you are working right now. Green is a detail line attached to the event just above it. And pink equals completed alarms and signals. Depending on the settings within your Manitou Supervisor workstation, there may be a ribbon bar present on the right-hand portion of the alarm form. The ribbon bar replaces the many pop-up dialogs that may occur during alarm handling. When a ribbon bar item has something to acknowledge, the applicable icon flashes yellow. The icon will then turn green and stop flashing once the operator has acknowledged the notification. The upper right hand corner of the alarm form displays a snapshot of the health and welfare of the account. The alarm line shows that the account is currently in alarm. It shows the number of active alarms within the alarm queue for that customer inside the parentheses. Additionally, the line reflects if there are currently any items not yet restored. The next line shows the monitoring status of the customer record. Mostly, this should show the customer as active with a green line. After that is the time zone line. The customer activity log within the alarm displays in the customer's local time while handling alarms. However, it may be useful to know where the customer resides while handling their alarm. The service line shows green and full means that there is nothing currently on test for this account. The account is in full service. All systems monitored on this account display with their ID and description in bold below the service line. The action pattern section displays the step-by-step -step instructions for handling an alarm. These two are color coded. Yellow indicates the next available action. Green represents an action still pending completion. Red represents a completed action. Blue means the contact to an email or an external feature is pending completion. 
Now that we know the type of alarm that we received and have a basic understanding of what is happening at the customer site, we can now start taking the first steps to handle the alarm. There are three ways to begin the first action. You can click on the action menu and select do in the drop down, press the D key on your keyboard, or you can double click the available line. For our example, we are first sending out an email to the customer using our email script that we created, giving them the alarm details. Simply click send to send the email. If desired, notifications like email and text can be automatically sent out without operator intervention. Next, the action patterns show that we need to contact the customer by phone. Upon double clicking the next available line, if there are comments tied to that contact person, then the comments box will display before launching the auto dialer. The auto dialer has several key features the dialing window, the keypad, the call response, and the function buttons. The dial button is highlighted and ready for action upon loading the auto dialer. This is in place in order to allow those who must select a line to allow the auto dialer to dial. When the auto dialer makes contact by connecting the call, the button then changes from dial to hang up. You also have the ability to validate passwords. The cursor is automatically loaded into the password field. If the password is simple to type, you can type the password and press enter to validate it. If not, it is possible to either click the drop down arrow or press the alt key plus the down arrow. After selecting the password from the list, there is one more step to validate the password. The access section displays what the password authorizes. This is a read only field. Notice the comments and contacts buttons are here as well. So you do not have to leave this dialog in order to view comments tied to this account or view the contacts on the contact list. If the validated password has permission to cancel the alarm, as this one does, the OK button enables. If the OK button does not enable, simply click or tab to the cancel button. Now that the password was successfully validated, it is possible to enter notes about the conversation with the customer. Based on our action pattern, after we verify that this is not a false alarm, our next step is to contact the authorities. I'm going to press the D key on my keyboard to begin the next step and launch the auto dialer in order to contact the authorities. For demoing purposes, we're going to assume the authorities have been contacted and continue on to the next step by clicking the continue button. This launches the authority contact dialog. This dialog contains five specific sections. The top section is the permit section. This displays the permit number, if required by the authority, as well as its status and appropriate dates when provided. The second section is the number of false alarms against a prescribed limit. These limits are defined by the individual authorities. The third section is the view section. Just like on the auto dialer, these two buttons reveal the comments tied to the customer record and the contacts displays the contact list details. The cursor has its focus within the name slash ID field upon loading this dialog. There is no need to grab or move the mouse to get focus into the field. Simply start typing the dispatcher name or ID when they provide it. If available, it is possible to tab into the incident number field and enter any reference number for canceling dispatch. When an operator enters values into both of these fields, the dispatch checkbox checks itself. If there is no incident number to reference, it is simple enough to tab to the box itself and press the space bar to turn it on or click the box. The only choice for the initial call is notify. If the authority calls back, it is possible to select on location or cleared. The last section of the authority contact dialog is the comment section. This allows the entry of any additional notes about this dispatch. When all action pattern items are complete, the finish button will only have the close option enabled. Otherwise, it is possible to select either operator cancel or customer cancel. Each require some sort of password validation. After selecting close, the close alarm dialog presents. You can select a resolution code by clicking the down arrow. This will display all of the resolution codes. You can use the up and down arrows to navigate through them. Or you can simply type it in. Once you have selected the appropriate resolution code, you may enter your reason at the bottom in the comments section and then click OK. 
Congratulations, you've handled your first alarm in Manitou. Now you are ready to handle your next alarm. Thank you for watching our alarm handling video.